Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another Hobby Collab tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how I went about painting up this Kairos Fate Weaver. So we start with a white prime and then we base coat with Liquitex Turquoise Ink. You're probably going to want to put at least two coats. Just make sure you get a good solid base coat of this turquoise. The reason I'm using ink is because it's very vibrant and it goes through the airbrush really nice. You could also use turquoise out of a rattle can if you can find it, uh, but I didn't have that on hand so that's why I used this ink. Uh, this is what it should look like once you've got a couple coats on. You'll notice it's a little shiny because that's the uh, finish that inks tend to have. Um, shouldn't be a problem going forward though. Then we're going to grab Vallejo model color blue-green and we're going to angle um, our airbrush from the bottom. So basically we're getting the opposite of a Zenithal. We're doing a, a Nadir anti-Zenithal, um, whatever you want to call it, from below. And the reason we're doing this is because uh, we're going to be working on a kind of glowing magical effect like this this um this wizard is uh you know he's he's bursting with magical energies um and the way we're going to achieve that is we're going to start by uh breaking some conventions right normally you'd think that um uh, highlights would be coming from above but we're gonna come from below that's not a hard and fast rule we are going to um also give a nice gradient to the uh, edges of the wings here up to you how far up you go. Uh, I only went maybe a third of the way up the last row of, uh, of feathers here. You're also going to want to apply this blue-green in um, areas of deep recess. So like this, his upper arm here um, is an area I'm going to come back to quite a bit. You also notice the areas like the neck um, and the inside of the legs there are also uh, painted with that blue-green. Now I'm working on um, the layers between the feathers, right? He's got these like multi-layered feathers here. And between those layers, I'm spraying some of this blue-green as well. Don't worry if you get a little overspray over the top, but the point is, is we really wanna focus on the area between the layers. Then we're gonna grab Liquitex Titanium White Ink. And within those previous uh, blue-green areas, we're gonna apply some white. Um, this is to kind of enf enf enhance that uh, glowing effect that we've been working on. Um, this is a lot less, uh, you're, you're using this much more strictly than you are the previous blue-green. Think of this as the, the, the area that the magical energy or the light is emanating from, right? So the brightest point would be white, and then uh, as, it, as the power spreads out, you get the blue-green. So make sure you're leaving plenty of that blue-green um, visible. And same thing with the, the feathers, you we're gonna make sure we're getting a gradient from that blue-green to that uh, titanium white on the edges of the feathers here. Now I didn't film this, but I did put a glossy varnish on and that's because the next step is actually gonna be a uh, oil wash. And I'm using Absalong 502 Snow White. Uh, any white oil will do as long as it's like very bright white. And the point here is that we're trying to get um, all these recesses white, right? In the same way that we were painting um, those uh, the, the recesses from below with the white ink, uh, we're gonna do it with the white oil now. It's just a lot easier with an oil because of capillary action. See, see how nicely it flows into these, um, these areas. Now, if you get white in the wrong area um, with this oil, you grab a little bit of mineral spirit and wipe it away. I, I guess I should have uh, noted that I did make it a wash consistency with uh, oil, uh, with mineral spirit, excuse me. Uh, now we're gonna move on to culture hustle neon pink this is just about the brightest neon pink i've ever used um and we're going to focus this on the wing tips and that first layer right there so just these areas you're not going to paint this on the upper part of the wing where we just did the oil uh, where i showcased the oil you're not going to do this on the body um, you're going to focus this on the wings and then he has some wings on his legs as well you're going to paint them there but these are the main areas of focus for this pink um, you'll probably have to do uh, at least two layers um, to get that full saturation with this pink. Um, make sure you do, it's super worth it. It's it's incredibly saturated and vibrant. Um, now we're gonna, you know, I, I said don't use that pink on the body. What we're gonna use on the body is Liquitex Fluorescent Blue. Um, and you're gonna focus this on the areas um, that are on the body that we, that we painted white, as well as these um, areas in between the wings and the body. Uh, make sure you get the under parts like the neck um, 
and the legs and the tops of the wings, which I told you to leave off previously. You can hit these all with that fluorescent blue. Um, this one, you don't need to be as, um, you don't need to put as many layers as you did with the pink. I feel like this actually covers pretty well in one. All right, now here you go. Here's where we should be at. Oh, don't drop it. Uh, this is where we should be at with the, uh, after the fluorescent blues. You see a couple areas where I probably need to go back in and add a little bit of that blue, but you can already see on the legs here the effect we're going for, right? It's almost like this weird magical energy is flowing through his legs here. Um, that's the effect we're going for. Obviously, we're not finished, but um, that's a good example of, of what we're looking to achieve. Now we're going to grab Vallejo model color turquoise, and we're going to dry brush uh, over those areas that we uh, oversprayed that white and therefore uh, didn't want to turn pink. Specifically, the area between the layers of feathers. Um, after we do that, we're going to return to that Absolute 502 Snow White. Hopefully you didn't throw that out by now. Uh, and we're going to choose a couple of areas, a couple focal points to re-add in this white. We want these areas to be even brighter than the, that fluorescent blue. In fact, we're going to end up changing the color a little bit. So I focus on the necks, both necks, uh, the chest area, and then a little bit of this leg here. And of course, my favorite area, the upper arm here. I also return to those areas with a titanium white ink to give them a little bit of glow effect. Uh, but the memory card deleted them, so I wasn't able to capture that. Then we're going to move on to fluorescent blue and mix of light livery green. And over those areas, those uh, focal points I just mentioned, and as you can see, the white has been sprayed. Um, spray this blue-green mix and you get this awesome, magical... I, I, the only I can only describe this color as magical. I don't, I, don't, I don't know really even what color it is. Um, but uh, once we're done with that, we're going to move on from the body for a little bit. We are going to start working on the cloth. So we start with Vallejo Game Color Hexed Lichen. Um, it's kind of a reddish, purpley, violet color. We're also going to paint his book this color. And make sure you get those tassel ribbon things as well. Um, the reason I went with purple is because, you know, there's... When we're mixing those blues and pinks, you get this kind of purple color. So it made sense to, to return to that. Now we're gonna grab AK Interactive Blue Violet, and you see me pointing with my pencil. That is the angle I'm going to shoot my airbrush at. Uh, to the up, uh, to the top, and to the right. Um, and the reason we're doing that is because, as you can see, if you look at the folds here, um, it maintains that hex lichen, it maintains that shadow. Um, so, th you know, just by changing the angle of where we're spraying with the airbrush, we're getting most of the work done for us. Um, we're not having to go in and highlight with a brush. Uh, now, obviously, you know, not everyone has an airbrush, so if you were to do this with a brush, my best piece of advice would be um, use a reference, you know, um, point a lamp directly over, uh, over the cloth in a way that uh, um, represents how you want the light to fall over the loincloth, and then you paint that, uh, paint where that light uh, falls. We're also going to add a little bit of a gradient here onto the book, um, just because it looks nice. <laughs> I don't think the lighting actually makes any sense in that case, but you know, whatever. Now we're going to use Dollar Rowney Purple Lake, uh, Purple Lake ink, and you can see me using my fancy pencil there to show you what angle I'm shooting from. So now we're shooting from the bottom and the left, um, and this is going to increase the uh, the shadows um, in contrast to that upper right. Uh, blue violet spray we did previously. Now this is like pretty close to being done, like a lot of the work has been done for us and it's done very quickly. Now all we're gonna do is grab Vallejo Game Color Hex Lichen and that AQ Interactive Blue Violet, mix it one to one, and then dry brush in the shadow areas. We're not gonna touch the highlighted areas because it's already done for us. We're gonna add a little bit of detail, um, or we're gonna accentuate the detail in those shadow areas. Um, because they can get killed a little bit by that purple lake. Now he does have a little design here. Um, we're going to base coat that uh, with Vallejo, Vallejo Metal Color Pro Dark Prussian Blue, excuse me. Um, probably going to take two coats with this. Um, and then we're going to mix that Dark Prussian Blue with that turquoise that we dry brushed with earlier. And this is how we're going to highlight this um, uh, cloth here. Now I mentioned using light uh, a lamp a top down lamp as a reference uh, for where you should draw your light, and that's what I did in this case. So, um, looking where the light falls on this cloth, and using it uh, as a guide. 
for this mix. And if you want to go higher, you can change the ratio and do uh, uh, a lighter, lighter mix and highlight further. Now for the talons uh, or nails or whatever these things are, we start with a base coat of Vallejo Monocolor Black. And then <laughs> I don't know why I put black gray in the screen like that, but then we uh, uh, put some Vallejo Model Color Black gray and we just layer up, um, leaving that Vallejo Model Color Black uh, in the shadows and in the, on the sides, I guess, would be the, the best areas to leave. Once that's dry, we're gonna make a mix of French Mirage Blue and that Black Gray, one-to-one -one mix again. And again, using the top-down lamp as a reference, we're just gonna paint uh, this mixture layered on a little bit. You can see where the light is following from the lamp. Um, and that tells us exactly where we wanna put our mix. Uh, for the metal, Scale Color Necro Gold, my favorite, and Dollar Rowney Purple Lake. Three-to-one mix. Um, that Purple Lake is very thin, obviously it's an acrylic ink. Um, so you wanna have a heavier ratio uh, uh, weighted ratio in, in, in the favor of the gold. Um, and you're just gonna base coat all the gold in this. Um, it's probably gonna require two coats, as you can see, it's a little splotchy there. Um, so definitely requires at least two coats. But the reason we're doing this is it gives, adding that little bit of purple adds a little bit of shadow, a little bit of darkness to that necro gold. Um, and I just think it looks really nice. I mean, you've seen, or you could also use Juchi Violet if you don't wanna use purple lake ink. Um, but once that's dry, using the lamp as a reference. If there's a theme here, I'm sure you're, you're noticing. Grab that necro gold and just highlight up these gold areas. Uh, you can really see it here, right? You can see where that white light is reflecting. That's just where I'm putting my paintbrush with the pure necro gold. And then finally, we're gonna use AK Interactive Metal Acrylics Gold. Um, and just again, where the light falls, that's where we paint. Now, obviously it's a little bit harder for me to do this um, because I'm trying to film, um, but you should try to maintain the same uh, angle <laughs> under the light, obviously, because if you you know keep, if you keep changing the angle of your model, it's not gonna make any sense. Um, but you know, I had to do it for the camera, so it's a little weird. Um, we're gonna add a little bit more uh, shadow to these by uh, mixing up Tamiya panel liner. Uh, I use black and deep brown in a one-to-one -one mix. And it just helps with that contrast, that super bright AK gold, and then this uh, rich dark brown um, makes for really, really nice looking gold. All right now, we gotta work on this book here. Um, I use Vallejo model color, I'm sorry, Vallejo gang color dead white, and I just make some shapes and uh, some fake text here, right? Some squiggly lines here. Um, you know, if you were really wanted to try hard, you could look up some zine and marks or whatever. Now the reason I left the pages black and I'm painting in white is because we're gonna make these look like they're glowing. I um, mean, I felt like this was the most straightforward way to achieve that. Hey, there we go, look, there's little diagrams, very cool, he likes triangles. Um, there's also these like holes um, in, in the pages and on the back of the book as well. Uh, and I fill those in with white as well. Um, what we're gonna end up doing is we're gonna end up glazing on some light livery green in a bit. And that's just to make it look like it's glowing, right? So there's like these weird holes on the back. I don't know. If you have tryptophobia, that's just probably unpleasant. Um, what are these? I don't know. Magic holes. Um, now, light livery green. I'm using it through an airbrush. I don't know why I did this. I should have just used a brush. The point is, is it's really thinned down. Um, uh, and you can just glaze it on with a brush. Don't don't be like me and airbrush this part. Uh, it was a waste of time. Um, now, I went in and blacked out the tongue in white and then sprayed some of that uh, previous pink we'd used earlier. I felt like the, the model needed a little more pink brought back into it. Uh, so that's what I did. Next up, we're gonna start working on these gems here. Uh, you're gonna start off with a base coat of Vallejo model color black. However many of these gems you want, there's a lot on his armor. I didn't do all of them. And look, if the more of these you paint black, the more gems you're gonna have to do so. Be careful. Uh, make sure you know you're, you know you want to do all of these. Um, but you're just going to base coat in this black, and then grab Vallejo model color intermediate green, and create a little crescent. Um, I tend to go bottom right side with the crescent. Um, there's a third one hidden under his little piece of hair there, and then you're going to use Vallejo game color as Scorpina green, and within that previous crescent, you're going to draw a smaller crescent. 
Um, this is a little bit brighter. Um, so, it, it, you know, it looks like a gem, this, I, I guess. <laughs> um, then after you complete these, you're gonna use livery green. Now this is not the same livery green we were using earlier. This is livery green, not light livery green. This is not an air paint. But you're going to uh, paint a small, even smaller crescent within the previous two crescents. Uh, not exactly rocket surgery. Um, then we're gonna use Vallejo Game Color Dead White and just add a white dot in the opposite corner, so in this case, the top left of the gem. There you go, it looks nice and shiny. You can also put on a gloss varnish if you want, but I prefer to leave it this way. Finally, we're gonna glue on the rest of the parts. That means the loincloth and the book. And what I mean by that is I'm not gonna glue it on very well because I'm just gonna drop it. Hey, yep, genius. Um, make sure you glue it on well and that it fits. And uh, once you're done with that, that should leave you with this. Here is our glowing Zinchian wizard boy. Um, hey, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. Um, if you did, we'd appreciate any support you can give, like, subscribe, so on and so forth. Um, you might notice that the uh, base is bare. Uh, that's because this was painted up for a friend of ours, a uh, friend of the channel. And uh, listen, I'm sure they would love some suggestions on how they should base this. So if you have any ideas, please leave a comment. Um, I'm sure that would help them out a ton. Um, Anyway, uh, this was a lot of fun. Hope you learned something. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.